Hello and welcome to another episode of Learning by Doing, brought to you by <laughs> brought to you by Data Talks. Um, so today we're going to be doing Learning by Doing, which means you get to watch a real data scientist do some real exercises. Uh, so in this case, we're looking at pandas uh, and doing some exercises in the pandas domain. Uh, so this is Grips Mora's library. It's called Pandas Exercises. It's excellent, especially if you are a teacher or you're someone trying to learn pandas. Um, so go ahead and check out the link in the description below. Uh, so with no further ado, let's get started. So as you can see, we are visualizing this time. We're going to do a couple of these sort of exercises around the visualization part. So let's just get started. Um, so we can import the data set, of course. So this is the Chipotle data set. Uh, we've used this a couple of times in this, and I've actually used this a couple of times for my own. Um, uh, let's see, it's already imported. PD dot. So I've used it a couple of times for my own classes. Um, uh, URL. Uh, there is a question I always forget. I, yeah, it's tab separated. So you can tell because it says TSV. <laughs> okay, so this means we need to have the separation equals to backslash tab. So be our data frame. Sweet. Okay, so assign it to a variable called cheapo. Totally fine. Check out the first 10 entries. So you guys are super familiar with this type of stuff. And this is basically the type of stuff that you'll want to do um, every time that you go ahead and get a new data uh, source. Oh. Speaking while doing. Um, we can check this out. We've got item names, descriptions, and item price, uh, as well as quantity. So create a histogram of the top five items bought. Okay, cool. It's kind of interesting because they imported this collections counter here, which almost uh, suggests that they want you to go ahead and use this. Um, let's go ahead and try this in a slightly different way. Let's go ahead and group by the items and then sum the quantities. So we can go cheapo dodge group by. Uh, pretty simple. And we're going to use the ag syntax, which we've seen a lot of times before, uh, especially I've mentioned it. If you've not seen the ag syntax, you can go ahead and check out my tutorial up here. It's really quite nice. Um, so item name dot ag, and then let's go ahead and we are going to get the quantity to see the number of items bought. So we're looking at quantity, and then we want to sum that quantity. Okay, and you'll see this actually gives us these items as well as um, the quantity. Um, but we want to go ahead and plot this. Um, I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't call this a histogram. It, it's sort of more of a a bar chart, I guess you would say, um, because you're just seeing each item how much they have. I think that's what they mean. Um, so let's go ahead and get the top five items. So let's go uh, sort uh, values. Um, you can also just do this with value counts instead of doing this group by here. Um, though the value count won't work since we're summing quantity. So group by. Uh, so we sort values. Um, let's go ahead and say ascending equals false. This will give us the top. And then let's go ahead and do uh, lock to go ahead and get us the top uh, five. Oh, uh, sort values is missing, of course, by. So we'll, we will sort it by quantity. OK. And another one. That looks fine. Uh, slice, slice, slice. Let's go ahead and just check out what this looks like. This might not actually be. Oh, no, it is. OK, there's. Um, OK, so let's just go ahead and grab the top five. So chicken bowl, chicken burrito, blah, blah, blah. So these are the top five. And we want to go ahead and plot these. Um, so I'm going to call this um, top five. Pretty simple. Uh, let's just go ahead and print this out right at the bottom here. This will be our top five. Nice thing about pandas is that it does a lot of the plotting for you. So I'm not a matplotlib expert. Uh, I know Seaborn and I know how to just basically do it via pandas, which I will show you a little bit right now. So we've got top five and you can just do dot plot. Um, oh, and this will generally just kind of like figure out what the time. So in this case, it's not a bar, but it will generally kind of figure out some of the things for you. So right, we go ahead and we plot the top five's quantity. That is done here. Let's go ahead and make this uh, kind equals bar. I hope that's what it is. Uh, so now it's a bar chart. And now this is actually fine. You know, um, it's not the best, 
um, but it will do. Now we can make this one better, and I will just do this here uh, using Seaborn. Uh, so we can go ahead, Seaborn is basically just wraps matplotlib. It's just sort of a, a fancy, pretty version of matplotlib that is sort of simple and is very, you, you don't need to memorize everything when you go about it. So let's go ahead, import Seaborn uh, as um, SNS, uh, SNS dot, let's go with bar plot. Let's just run this one time so I can get autocomplete. Our plot. Sorry, my autocomplete is like very slow, um, especially the first time. Okay, we've got X, Y, and data. Okay. Let's just try this out. We can just try data goes to top five and see if it can kind of infer it. Um, equals top five. Yeah, it did not, it did not really infer that. <laughs> um, Right, so yeah, yeah. So this this will be a little bit more troublesome than I would have suspected. So let's go here. We can reset the index. Uh, this will pop the item name into uh, a column, and then I can go ahead and specify the uh, y is quantity equals um, uh, quantity. Uh, the x um, will equal uh, item uh, name and then the data is top five. Um, interpret item underscore name and partially the reason you need to go ahead and pass the reset index in here. Okay and uh, yeah we need to rotate this a little bit and then it will look really pretty. <laughs> Promise. Um, Let's go ahead and see how we rotate. Orient, maybe it's orient. Um, what's orient do again? Um, it's all these options. So orient, orient, orient. Okay, orientation of the plot. Oh, well maybe this will actually just help. Uh, let's go ahead and just orient it horizontally. Um, orient. Because the other thing we need to do, we could just pass in keyword arcs. Um, so we can just orient, orient this horizontally. Ooh, doesn't allow that. Um, orient. Let's just make sure I got that right. Um, orient none. And did it, I thought it took uh, H as one of the parameters. Or H or V. Okay, well. Uh, not a problem. Okay, so we'll need to go ahead and figure out. Uh, so either now it's not on the axis. It's going to be some like keyword args. Um, data tips hue time dinner. We're just trying to get this to rotate a little bit. Um, and at some point I will give up. Uh, Tips, line width, face color, edge color, um, uh, hue data order. Does it take keyword args? So it does take keyword args. Um, let's go ahead and uh, rotation maybe equals uh, 45. No, rotate equals 45. Uh, map plot lib rotate uh, the uh, x labels um, rotation 45 Ugh. not super important in this case looks good enough we'll stick with this um, I'll try to figure this out uh, actually sort of during a little cut scene just so I can show you so let's go ahead and keep going. Okay, back again. I couldn't find a specific way to go ahead and just pass this into Seaborn. Um, so I, I just went ahead and I just did plt.xtx. This is probably what they want you to do. Um, in this case, trying to use the, I guess, uh, functional notation of matplotlib after you go ahead and plot the Seaborn uh, chart. It's just unfortunate I couldn't find the um, uh, the actual the way to do it from within inside the function declaration. So if you guys know that please let me know uh, would definitely be helpful. Okay, let's keep going um, Create a sketch. I, yeah, we only have one more question. So we're good. 
Uh, create a scatter plot with the number of items ordered um, per order price. Interesting. Um, okay. So this should be, again, pretty simple. So number of items ordered per order price. So we can literally just do um, cheapo um, dot, uh, let's see, maybe we can just do plot. Um, so yeah, so we got x equals, um, uh, what is the, so what I'm gonna do, so we've got quantity and then what's the other one called? Item price. Oh, so the problem here is we need to go ahead and convert item price uh, specifically to a number. Uh, so we can do this by saying the price uh, will equal um, uh, cheapo dot item price. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and do a string operation on it. So stir dot um, slice. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and take off the first uh, letter of this, which is the dollar sign. And we'll do as type uh, float. We'll check this out. Price. Okay, looks pretty good. It's a type float. Looks like the run the, the number is right. So cheapo um, uh, price equals price prints. Okay, sweet. So on the x-axis we can have the uh, price, and on the y-axis. Uh, we can have the uh, quantity, okay? So, and we want the kind to be scatter. Kind equals scatter. Okay, um, yeah. So you'll notice that the quantities fall into buckets here. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all going all the way up. Um, the prices are a little bit more varied. Uh, which sort of gives you these sort of what appears to be lines along the the buckets of of just of one because quantity is only within one and two so we don't have a lot of variation there um if we wanted to go ahead and make this a seaborne plot let's try that one more time um so sns dot in this case scatter plot um x y yeah so this will be great so x y data so let's go ahead we've got x y uh already up here um, and we'll just need the data equals chipo. Um, and this already looks pretty good. Um, there's one more option here, which I think will help us a lot. Uh, let's check this out. So we can use size markers, a little bit of jitter uh, in this case. So jitter sort of pushes things up and down. It kind of gives us a little bit of reference for how many points are actually there, because it's very hard to go ahead and see these points. So let's add y jitter in. X jitter is kind of totally fine because the X is actually, the price does vary a little bit, but the uh, quantity doesn't vary too much. So let's add just a little bit of Y jitter um, with a 0.1. Uh, let's go ahead and just put one. Uh, okay, let me go ahead and make sure, let's see what the Y jitter is in. Is it true, false? Let's check this out. Um, jitter, yeah, great. Okay, currently non-functional. <laughs> ah, classic. Okay, well, good enough. <laughs> when it's when it is functional again, we will revisit this. Um, as always, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you kind of get to see me sort of dive into a little bit of visualization, what I normally do, how I can how I sort of think about these problems. So let's go ahead and. Um, so this was the actual source that I used. Um, so let's go ahead and check out the solutions that they had. Um, and hopefully their solutions look really great because I know that some people are really experts at doing visualizations um, and I'm not sort of this expert, but I'm just, you know, a data scientist, so I should be able to do some of it. Okay, tab separator, print out the first bits of Chipotle. Uh, create a histogram, okay. So got it, okay. so. You know, this is basically what they did. Um, you can see it's fine. They, you know, added the label, they added the title, all this, they made df.plot, kind bar. So they set all of these themselves, um, which is nice. Now, a lot of this can just be done for you because if you remember, even just going back up here, um, this looked totally fine to me. 
Uh, this, I mean, this, I mean, I wouldn't present this on a presentation to you know my boss, but it's totally fine for sort of getting the point across. Um, so I, I kind of like this as just sort of very simple because remember, this is this is literally the command that we used, um, and this was a little bit simpler than sort of looking at uh, this stuff up here. Um, okay, cool. Create a scatter plot. So this, yeah, so this looks much better. Um, order price versus items ordered. Oh, and see what they did here? They didn't even, they didn't do, they did this actually per um, per item. They didn't actually do this per um, like order. Uh, so they were looking at each item, how many were ordered and what their order price was. And so you'll need to say so grouped by order ID some, oh no, they grouped by order ID. Hmm, I guess in this case, yeah, so remember one order can have multiple different items in it. So this is this is totally fair. We should have totally done this. So if we knew our data a little bit better, uh, we would have honestly done this as well. So they grouped by order ID, so they looked at the order, and they looked at the number of items in each order, and they looked at the quantity in each order. And as you would imagine, it's it's pretty it's pretty linear. There's gotta be a linear relationship. Um, okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, go ahead, leave a like uh, and subscribe. I, I purposefully at, you know, leave in all this junk in here uh, as well, uh, just to sort of show you what a real, what a, basically what a data scientist goes through. I kind of want to show you that I am actually doing this off the cuff, um, that I'm not sort of you know preparing or 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 doing that type of uh, you know that that type of thing. This is for that is to say for other videos I do I do prepare but this is the type of video that I think is just it's more fun to do this off the cuff so you can sort of see the actual thought process that I go through um, so if you liked it please go ahead and leave a thumbs up no snarky comments down there I feel like I made a little verbal blunder uh, otherwise uh, I really love you guys over at data talks and I hope to see you again